When I was a child back in 1960, there was a popular toy made by the Ideal Toy Company. It was called Mr. Machine. I remember wanting a Mr. Machine. It was just a robot toy that walked around and went forward, and you could turn little dials and make it turn left or right. didn't do much of anything other than look really cool and mechanically walk. Mostly, we don't like being called machines. It's offensive to our pride and vanity. Recently, I wrote something about people being machines. And someone left a comment, a machine is not a human, but made by an organization of humans. What seemed to offend the person was that she didn't like thinking of herself as a machine, as a mechanical thing, as something that, that was acted upon by something else or that had no free will. We make up all kinds of things about being machines. But if you can hang on just a little bit longer, maybe I can help you to see something about this work teaching that could give you a freedom that you've never had before. I've often thought that people, in many ways, are like cars driving down the freeway, except that the people are locked in the trunk. And instead of being able to steer the car, or direct the car, they're back in the trunk, locked there, looking through a travel guide, looking at all the pretty pictures, all the horrible pictures, or whatever they're looking at, and enjoying them or not enjoying them, depending upon their associations and reacting to those pictures. And just like reading a good romance novel or a good exciting thriller, sometimes our imagination can take over and make it more real than life itself. Before we can get out of the car's trunk, we need to get our noses out of the picture book. The problem with us is we can believe something that isn't true. We imagine that the picture book is real life. We imagine that everything that we're seeing is really happening right now. When the fact is, as though the pictures may have been taken at some time into the past, they're not happening right now. They are just images of something that did happen or was at one time. And as far as being locked in the trunk of the car is concerned, if you don't like that analogy, imagine yourself in the car, and instead of holding on the steering wheel, you take hold of the rearview mirror. And when you want to go someplace, instead of turning the steering wheel, you turn the mirror so that you can see something else. This is pretty much how we live our lives. We don't know that, but it is a fact when you begin to observe what actually happens in our lives. What makes us machines is our mechanical reactions to the stimuli from the world. They're coming through the five senses all the time. And because we're so glued to the five senses, because our reality is something that's formed from the five senses, we believe it. Have you ever said or done something that you later regretted? Why did you do it if you were going to later regret it? Well, because either, one, you didn't know you would later regret it, or two, you were really not thinking about what it was that was going to happen after you did whatever it was you did that you regretted. Being conscious is being able to understand the consequences of our actions, being able to connect the dots. You remember those picture books when you were a child and they would give you these little dots and you'd start off with number one and then number two and number three, depending upon the age group that you were in or the age group the picture book was made for, the puzzle book was made for, and you'd connect the dots and sure enough, something would appear, some picture would appear where there had only been dots before. Once you made the lines with a pen or a pencil or a crayon or whatever you used. In a lot of ways, it's like that for us. Being able to connect the dots to make the picture appear, that's how we understand. We look at the dots and they're just a random mess of dots but when we connect them in the proper order, a picture begins to appear, a form begins to appear. And this is how understanding is for us. There's a system that teaches us how to free ourselves from the mechanical reactions that we have to life, the things that we keep doing over and over and over again. Why is it that someone will marry an alcoholic, for example, and then after a terrible relationship, get out of the relationship and promptly find another alcoholic to get into a relationship with? And do that not once, not twice, not three times, but many times. Why is it that people continue to react to the same thing in the same way all the time? This whole system is worth learning when you've suffered enough. If you haven't suffered enough, well, back to life. There's plenty more where that came from.